Code 1, civil priority. Isolation now in effect. To avoid the risk of contamination, please stay indoors and await further instructions. Well, good morning, Tribe World. It's Ray here with another lockdown uh, uh, interview. I hope you're all doing well. And join me in welcoming the very lovely and talented Laura Wilson, best known and loved by you all as, as May in the tribe. And of course, Jet Marigold in Atlantis. Hi, good morning, Laura. Good morning, Ray. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm not too bad. I mean, we we're just saying you're up in, in Sydney in Australia and I'm down yeah. here, Gold Coast. And and, and how are you getting on with all this uh, this COVID-19 situation, Laura? How is it affecting you? Well, you know, it's it's definitely impacted me, of course, like it's impacted everyone. Um, but I'd have to say, I mean, I spend a lot of time um, at home studying and working and all that kind of thing anyway. So in that respect, it's kind of business as usual for me. Um, but definitely, you know, there are some obvious restrictions on seeing my friends and, you know, um, working out in the public and all that kind of thing. So there have been some holdups, but I'm just kind of embracing the slower pace, to be honest. Yeah, no, it's an interesting time out here today or yesterday or whenever it is that New Zealand has gone down to level three, as they call it. So they're yeah. to get out and about. And, and here in Queensland, I don't quite, I get all confused, Laura. I don't know what I'm allowed to do, what I'm not allowed to do. But. Well, I'm not sure the Australian government have made it terribly clear anyway, and it kind of is a moving feast anyway, isn't it? It's changing all the time, but... And you kind of state, and so up in New, you're in New South Wales, obviously, up in Sydney. Yeah, and, yeah. And they had it bad because of the cruise ships, I think. There was a cruise ship that came in. And... Yeah, yeah, there was one that came in and brought a, a few hundred cases, actually, into Sydney of COVID. Um, so yeah, that wasn't that wasn't great, obviously. But um, I think they've done a pretty good job since then of containing everything. It appears that the curve is flattening in Australia, so that's good. Uh, yeah, I think both both in New Zealand and Australia have done a very very good. Job. Oh, New Zealand have done a great job. Yeah, yeah. she's quite an amazing prime minister. She's uh, a young lady as well. I mean, and just amazing how uh, how well she's done. And so, Laura, you uh, what brought you to Australia? Uh, so I moved over to Sydney four years ago to, oh no, I've got someone in the background doing some yard work. Sorry yeah. about that. That's you can hear it. No, um, so yeah, I moved here four years ago to go back to university actually and uh, do a degree in naturopathic medicine, which I'm almost finished. Not entirely sure exactly when it will finish now, given everything that's going on, but yeah, pretty close. Oh, and, and what drew you to naturopathy? Had you always been interested in it, or was it something you just discovered? Uh, no. So, I mean, interesting story, I guess, for me, maybe. <laughs> um, but, so I always wanted to be a doctor, right, ever since I can remember. Um, and I got quite sick in my early teens. I had a really bad bout of glandular fever that left me quite sick for a while. Um, and I had a run of um, medical treatment that probably wasn't the strongest and it just left me feeling pretty um, like pretty despondent about the whole medical field at the time and then shortly after that um, and it was just before I started on the tribe actually I was introduced to natural medicine which wasn't really something that, that I'd been exposed to as a child um, and then all of a sudden everything just clicked into place and I was like, oh, see, now this makes sense to me. Um, and I actually um, started doing correspondence courses on set um, of, of the tribe in Atlantis High. And, you know, like introductory courses to natural medicine and, you know, all of that kind of thing. So it was definitely very much on my radar and a passion. And back then I thought that it was just an interest. And... Um, and thought that I'd, you know, um, proceed with an acting career. And then I got to a point where I decided that that wasn't what I wanted to do either. And that's when I came back to naturopathy in my early 20s. And I was living in the UK at this point, in London. And uh, I actually know Brighton, and then I moved to London um, to start my degree there. And I did that for a year. And then, you know, kind of life circumstances came up. And... Um, 
And so I put my studies on hold at that time. And I must have been about 24 at the time. And then went on to work on private yachts for a few years. Um, so I did that for almost seven years and then eventually <laughs> came back, finished up on the yachts, went, okay, what am I going to do now? And that's when the calling to go back and finish my degree in naturopathic medicine came in very, very loud and very clear. So that's kind of when I, um, you know, made some changes in life, moved to Sydney, as I said before, and yeah, really, um, got serious about getting this degree done. I love it. Once you get your degree... Would you, mm. you'll practice then, will you? How, how, what, how do you go about You get clients or you go yeah. practice or you, you work on your own? How does that work? So, I mean, with the qualification, I could go down several routes. Um, but what I'm planning to do, because I have been in student clinic for the last, well, over a year now, um, I already have a, a bit of a client base. Um, so I do plan to continue in clinical practice once I... Um, qualify once I graduate um, and you know I've got other ideas of potentially writing I'm in the process of finalizing a couple of articles at the moment to be published in some uh, natural medicine journals which is quite exciting um, and you know potentially doing um, educational things in my community and online and you know all sorts of stuff but yeah primarily I think I mean I just love working with clients I love working with people um so that will always 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 be a part of my my work life for sure and, and Laura for, for some of the listeners that may not be aware of the what the, what it's all about I mean how does that sit with so-called normal medicine I mean it's an alternative medicine is it homeopathic or so homeopathic um, medicine is part of naturopathy. It kind of comes under the umbrella. So the way that I like to explain um, what a naturopath is, is we're kind of the GP of the natural medicine world. So we do a little bit of everything. So homeopathic medicine is part of it. Um, you know, we look at um, nutrition and lifestyle um, nutritional supplementation, herbal medicine, um, you know, energetic medicine via um, flower essences and, and all that kind of thing. And also a lot of talk therapy as well, because that's such an important part of it. So it truly is holistic medicine. You know, we look at um, everyone, you know, from, you know, very simply put mind, body, soul, um, but it's really looking at the physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, um, social, environmental, you know, all of those kinds of things as well. I think it's fascinating. I mean, I'm really, yeah. I, I'm into that myself. My late mother, bless her, was um, part Roman Gypsy, part Scottish. But yeah, she taught me that where a nettle grows, a dock leaf will be close by. And yes. you take yeah. a dock leaf, it'll get you to rub it, you know. And, and um, you know, for, for all kinds of things. So, so it's really fascinating. And, it and, really is, yeah. I mean, it's been around since time began, really, isn't it? And uh, It really is. It is the traditional, like the original medicine, you know. It's traditional medicine, which is why I kind of laugh a little bit when people talk about, um, you know, Western medicine is traditional medicine and, you know, natu naturopathic medicine or natural medicine being like a new age thing. It's like, no, this, it all stems from what we did in the very beginning, which is what, you know, working with what nature provides us. That's right. And indigenous cultures, I'm actually... Mm, yeah. Uh, but but I, I think you're right when you say it's the mind, body, spirit and soul. And mm, so yeah. much illness, I think, comes from stresses or... Oh, so there's much. a sink, doesn't it? And, yeah. uh, you know, and the pressures of the modern world. I mean, we've evolved, I think, so fast even over the past hundred years where, you know, I mean, I, that's what I find fascinating going back to the vineyard to sit on a tractor and slow down and enjoy nature and mm. sunsets. I mean, it sounds very, very twee and cliche, but it's a, uh, it nourishes the soul. And it really does. Yeah. And it's so simple. And so, so I didn't realize, so, so kind of communicate like, well, they talk it in, uh, psychology I guess cognitive therapy but being able yeah. to talk and and share and to uh yeah it's very very interesting and that's fascinating and, mm. and, and so Laurie you you will then go into what private practice and 
and um, have clients and uh, and do some writing and uh, keep researching it and uh, yeah and it's great so I mean and on, on nutrition are you into are you vegetarian or, or do you eat meat or do you vegan how do you feel about that so um in terms of how I eat I'm I don't limit myself to any one thing so I eat primarily plant-based for sure um i eat a bit of fish um i don't eat any red meat um or dairy just simply because well i mean they're, they're both kind of inflammatory things for the body anyway but also my body just isn't a fan of them um and i'd, I'd say that i eat chicken like maybe once every two or three weeks um, so, I mean, it's not really kind of any strict way of eating. It's more just intuitive eating. So I just listen to what my body needs. And, you know, because I've been eating pretty well for quite a long time now, you know, like when rather than having those, um, you know, uh, programs running in my body of, oh, I really want a burger or a pizza or, you know, or that kind of thing, which are what, you know, those little craving monsters tell our brain sometimes. It's more, oh, man, I just really craving some greens or a green juice or, you know, some veggies, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, I was speaking with, I think it was uh, Tori the other other day, and I was there mm. on a box of chocolates, Laura. And, um, <laughs> and I thought, why is it that what supposedly is bad for you tastes so good? I know. Good for you. Taste <laughs> bad, you know? And um, like a... You know, because my wife's very much like you. She's, she's uh, in fact, in my family, they're all vegan or vegetarian. And, and myself and my two grandsons, we're meat eaters. And, uh, yeah. But uh, and I see them eating carrots. And so they're sitting there with their carrots and their, uh, you know, their greens. And I'm there with a box of chocolates and, and my, <laughs> my burgers, you know. And, yeah. And, uh, and I tried I tried the carrots and. You know, but it, it's uh, it just uh, it's, it's, I may I, it, I don't know if it's uh, if you get educated you educate your palate I don't know that uh, it's comfort food maybe I, that psychologically you know I know yeah I, well that's actually a big part of it Ray is the psychological part of it yeah. um, but there is a there is a obviously a retraining your taste buds as well like there is a period of doing that too um, but yeah stress and and um, you know comfort eating. Uh, to put it simply, is a very real thing. Yeah, I mean, when you analyze it, and that's what I, you know, again, again we were, I was speaking with Tom in one of the interviews, and Tom mm. has been um, sober, you know, that he likes. Yes, his, yeah, uh, I did know that. Yeah, and he's, he's done very well, and um, and it didn't sit well with him simply to uh, to drink it. He found it uh, just compounded it's difficult in understanding the world he inhabited. But I mean, myself, I love wine. And um, and if I have a bit too much of it, I suppose, you know, there's a lot of uh, young girls or ladies who suffer with some of the themes we explored in the tribe with bulimia. And then yes. comfort eating, you think, what is it? I mean, if you eat, it gives you comfort. Why does it give you comfort to eat? Then you feel guilty that you've eaten, mm -hmm. you've put on weight. And so maybe it's because of we're raised that way. It's something in our DNA. Maybe you know, for for food, uh, and it's a very intimate thing. Food, isn't it? That um, yeah. yeah. There's also the part as well of um, certain chemicals in food triggering off that kind of pleasure center in our brain, particularly sugar and you know some fats and that kind of thing. So there is that, like from a biochemical standpoint, there, there's that going on as well. So. That's why, you know, when we eat that chocolate, not only does it taste good, but we get that kind of, that, that pleasure from it as well. Um, yeah. I mean, cocoa as well. I mean, as opposed to chocolate, I think you're right when you, I mean, the modern world, you know, where they mix in. But I mean, cocoa, if you, if you have the original chocolate, how they used to make it years or centuries ago is, yeah. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. And, uh, and wasn't Coca-Cola a cough medicine, if I'm, unless I'm going mad. It started as some medicinal thing. I think I might be wrong on that. But um, uh, I think a lot of things like that were initially marketed that way, yeah, um, before the truth came out. Okay. But also, you know, the, the field of, I mean, medicine in general, but also, you know, nutrition, food, all sorts of things, changes 
I mean, so rapidly these days, but what we know now is, you know, so much more advanced than what we knew 50, 60, 70 years ago. Isn't that fascinating? And mm, yeah, and I love so, it. So you, you look at diet, you look at psychology, you look at the natural yeah. world, our planet, and, and isn't it amazing? So so really, you're, you're more like a Tyson in your real life. Uh, yes, yes, actually. I'm very much a Tyson in real life. Amazing. I mean, and... Uh, and so, um, and, and you, you know, this morning, as I mentioned before, we started recording, Laura, I'm a bit hoarse, I'm a bit asthmatic-y. And, um, and being a man, I think I've got man flu. I think I'm thinking, oh, my God, I hope I don't have COVID-19. And I'm all paranoid and all that stuff. But, I mean, when I get the flu, my old mum used to give me chicken soup when I was sick. And, yeah. uh, and that always seemed to work, you know. And, and, and being in post-war Britain... That I grew up, you know, where you'd uh, you know eat bone marrow. I mean, it's uh, to the vegetarians and the vegans, they'd they'd shiver and cringe. But and my wife used to uh, just say, "Oh my goodness, I can't serve you that up for dinner." But but I, I used to have like wine jelly and and I I don't know, you know. I mean, it's it's quite interesting. The uh, you know my mother, who you know I very rarely went to the doctor. I mean, it was it's quite yeah. me and and um, and so. And when you look at things, I was just reading about uh, this potential uh, thing that they're testing for of COVID-19 mm. uh, with the origins in, in, and I can't remember the name of it, but it was very similar to this thalidomide thing, you know, where um, with inadequate testing with modern medicine, you know, you're aware yeah. of by the terrible poor deformed children being born and so it's, 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 it's quite amazing, really. So and how does it sit with modern medicine? Do they regulate it, Laura, or do they embrace it? Do I mean, some physicians, I suppose, will. And, but, um, oh, in terms of um, naturopathic medicine? Yeah. And, yeah. So I think that more and more um, physicians are, you know, opening up to this way because really it's it's foundational for health, right? It's what the food that we put into our body are the, are the you know, the um, building blocks for health for us. They contribute to our, our cell formation and everything. So really, if we're not getting that right in our lifestyle, managing our stress and getting fresh air and exercising and all that kind of thing, if we don't have those foundational things um, you know, right, or at least on its way to being in a healthy state, then, you know, nothing else is really going to work for the long term. Uh, so I think there are a lot of physicians that are starting to get on board with that and understand that actually nutrition and lifestyle is really, really important. There are definitely a lot that still poo-poo it and say that it's pseudoscience and, you know, all that kind of thing. Um, but, I mean, I think that's the way with everything in the world, really, isn't it? There's always an argument for and against everything. Okay. So, yeah, yeah but it, it is exciting that there's more and more, like, science coming out to support, you know, um, good nutrition, diet, herbal medicine, um, nutritional supplementation, all that kind of thing to support health and well-being. And the lifestyle side of things. Our bodies and Mother Nature and our planet. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing, miraculous thing that we tend to, I guess, take it for granted, don't we? We tend to normalize without thinking. I mean, the miracle. You know, when my poor dad passed away recently. Oh, I'm sorry. About him. And thinking when he was a baby, his little bones, and, and he was young, and how the body changes. And... And, and within the body, we almost have our own our own pharmacy in the stomach, don't we, with bacteria that fight. Yeah. You know, you've got good bacteria and bad bacteria. And so, and the body is so, uh, as you rightly say, the natural way is that, that our body with, um, I mean, antibodies and all this kind of stuff, that you can fight disease generally with your own things already in the body. I mean... A hundred percent. At all times, what our body wants for us is to be healthy. 
that's why everything falls back on homeostasis in the body, right, which is pulling the body back into balance. And this is the constant kind of to and fro that's going on inside our body. But in order to do that, and there's this um, beautiful, um, you know, kind of principle in naturopathic medicine that um, – is called the vis medicatrix naturae, which is the healing power of nature. But also it kind of speaks to this innate ability of for all of us to heal ourselves. Um, and, but we, we've really got to be giving it the tools to be able to do it, right? So that's where, you know, our, um, what we put in our mouth to eat comes in, what we're drinking, you know, what we're thinking and moving our bodies and all that kind of thing comes into it. So, yeah, we've kind of kind of hold our own hand and, and help it help ourselves out. Oh, that's fantastic. So it's absolutely fascinating and and um, no, just amazing. And and so good bacteria comes from a certain kind of food, and bad bacteria, I guess, comes from the you know processed and unnatural, not from the natural world, really. And it's horrendous amount of salts and 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 gumph that they put in in food. And yeah, there's nothing wrong with KFCs. I'll get sued if I criticize them, but. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Like, We're like, not criticizing anyone here. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, talking about strong choices. Yeah, I was saying to my grandsons the other day that you know, growing up in post-war Britain, you know, where I long and I, I, I wondered, um, you know, I was feeling the need to have some peas. You know, I love peas, and I used to get them in a pod, you know, rather than in a can. And yeah, it's so different, and and organic produce and all of this stuff. So it's something that. We've evolved, I think, so fast with technology and yet mm. uh, maybe, maybe medicines. And a lot of the, I mean, some of the physicians, I can't understand why they poo-poo it because, I mean, they prescribe placebos. Um, mm. That's in itself the mind. I mean, it, it, it's just quite, quite a, it's that, that interlinking thing, as you say, Laura, of your mind, body, spirit, soul. And if it's not interconnected, that's where illness and stresses comes from i think that it's uh, yeah. amazing isn't it amazing yeah it is yeah it's fascinating so, i love it so laura just coming back i mean you 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 um after the tribe that you 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 travel you you how did you get involved on the yachts then and sailing how did you how did that come about yeah so i mean after the tribe and atlantis high i kind of ended up I spent a few more years acting, maybe like another couple of years acting after that. And then I moved to the UK um, where, I mean, I fell in love, moved to the UK to um, be with my love. And um, from there, that's when I started to kind of change my thoughts about what I wanted to do with my life. It's when I started to look at, um, you know, studying naturopathy back then in the UK and it was when I, um, yeah, after I did my first year of um, naturopathy in London, um, you know, a whole bunch of stuff came up that I couldn't, I couldn't keep on going with my studies at that point. And so I thought, oh, look, I'll just, I'll, I'll go and spend the summer, the European summer, in the south of France working on yachts. You know, I had a, I had a few friends doing it. They were having a blast. Um, so I thought, yeah, great. I mean, who doesn't want to be in the south of France for summer, right? Yeah. Um, this will be a great experience. I'll go and do it. And then that six months turned into six and a half, almost seven years. Yeah. And, yeah, and I traveled all over the world, um, visited some beautiful, incredible places, really saw all different um, uh, kind of aspects of life and the ratio of you know, um, staying in some islands that were in extreme poverty to seeing the the most lavish, you know, um, of lifestyles. So it was a real eye opener for me, just in terms of life and and people and people's experiences of life and you know all that kind of thing. Um, whilst also meeting a bunch of amazing people and yeah, just traveling the world. It was such an incredible experience, which is probably why that six months turned into six and a half years. Yeah, but again, that's a wonderful experience, Laura. To, and so, so, so you probably sailed the seven seas, except for the Arctic, I guess, but um, yeah, yeah, true. And there's no, and no seasickness. 
Generally, no. I mean, I think when I first got on there, when we were underway at sea, I might feel a little bit nauseous, but it would have to, by the end of it, it would have to be really, really bad weather for me to feel sick. Generally, I, it would make me feel a little bit tired, if anything. But no, I was very, very fortunate that I was not one of the ones with um, aggressive seasickness. Um, I love, I love, um, I mean, I love sailing, I have to say, but and I've yeah. been very lucky where, you know, I've travelled around the world as well, but generally it's on a big cruise ship, Laura. With a gym, yeah. You know? So, um, and we were in a hurricane once in the Atlantic and it was unbelievable oh, wow. there. And this was actually on the Queen Elizabeth, a huge ship. And you realise the power of Mother Nature. That, yeah, she's that, a force. Oh, horrendous. And so did, did you ever have any frightening kind of storms that, we, <laughs> did you ever have in a hurricane? Or? Yes. Um, I was never in a hurricane, but I certainly um, experienced some pretty severe weather. It was more so um, earlier on in, in my career in yachting. Um, we kind of, some some really, really bad weather hit kind of, out of nowhere really um and it was honestly like being um in a washing machine for about 12 hours and I mean there were not to sound dramatic Ray but there were definitely times when I thought this is in my first kind of few months of living on a yacht right and I thought man I don't know if we're going to make it through this yeah. it was it was pretty intense you know like half the yacht ended up um well you know the interior things in the interior breaking because um, the boat was rolling around so much, um, so it was it was pretty scary. Now these um, ships, were they like sailing ships, sailing yachts, or, or? So I worked on motor yachts. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I spent some time on some sailing yachts, but no, the ones that I was working on were were the motor yachts. And what what size would they be? I mean, what, how long would they be there? I mean, so they're... generally the ones that I worked on, I worked on a couple of different ones, but they were about um, sixty meters, so roughly two hundred feet. Yes. Wow. Wow, that's incredible. And yeah. do you have a favourite place that you sailed to, Laura? That, I mean, do you have a, a favourite port? Oh, look, I have a few different ones for different reasons, but I spent a year in Tahiti and I just love Tahiti. Yeah. So, and oh, just all of French Polynesia, actually, you know, Tahiti, Moorea, um, Bora Bora, you know, all of that kind of thing. I just absolutely fell in love with the place, like the place that the islands um, themselves, it's absolutely stunning, but also just the people there are so beautiful. Like they've just got such beautiful, kind hearts and it's so welcoming. It was, yeah, it was a really special time. Yeah, the one, the one my memory, I've been blessed to have traveled or sailed around those all the Pacific Islands as well, now, Lauren. Yeah. My memory of Tahiti is beautiful, but man, it's expensive. The ice creams are unbelievable. Oh, yeah, it's very expensive. Isn't yeah, it? you're right. It's just, uh, I mean, uh, but again, that's for me, but the, um, but no, I love it. And I loved, I actually loved Vanuatu. And the reason I love Vanuatu, it's so, you know, we went there and, um, and, uh, and, and it's almost, th well, third world primitive in some ways, but, Mm. Some of the children, the happiness, they didn't even know about, you know, some of the games that my grandchildren would play. You know, they'd just be let loose and climb trees. But they had, as you say, the beautiful spirit and shiny yeah. teeth and eyes and vibrancy and a happiness. And they were living uh, at one with Mother Nature. They weren't really uh, j j just amazing. And the music and the dance and... And the, uh, I, I, I love it too. I think it's absolutely beautiful. And uh, no, it's, yeah, I agree. Perhaps and it's just time. such simple lives, is it? Yeah, right? And they're so happy. Yeah, yeah. The, and and you, you know, you look at them, and that's precisely what you see. Is and and everybody, you know, we're always, aren't we? We're always pursuing happiness, and and um, yeah. amazing that I was reflecting the other day. You know, on some of the cats who are having uh, newborn children, and they're saying, "Oh, the you know, with the, when the babies are born, they don't do much but sleep and eat." And people mm -hmm. say, oh, "Still there." Once they start walking, they become more. And then they they said terrible too. And they say, "Well, once they go to school, then they'll meet other kids. They'll be amazing." But then they go to school, and they're kind of temper tantrums, and then yeah. become. <laughs> and then they're teenagers, and 
then when they're 20, you know, then you look back and you think, wasn't it nice when they were little babies, you know? <laughs> yeah. That kind of retrospective, Yeah. You, you know, kind of your change and... Um, and um, so, so when you went after your love, did your love stay with you, Laura, or did your love break your heart? So, no, there was no heartbreak, actually, um, but we did um, go our separate ways. And it was actually a beautifully amicable separation. Um, we just both kind of got to a point in our lives where for a long time we were on the same path. And then kind of without us even really realizing it, they just, our paths split off. And then when we did realize that, we sat down and had a discussion and, and you know, um, with a lot of love, decided to um, explore those, our, our paths. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, no regrets on either one of our behalfs. And, you know, we're still really good friends. I adore him. Um, yeah, we just both knew deep down that that was what we needed to do, which was hard because we were both still very much in love with each other, but we had to honour our own individual bigger callings. Yeah, no, that's important. I, I think that's very wise. And one thing I do, any listeners, sorry about the bird noise. Oh, no, it's fine. I love it. Yeah, there's nothing. I mean, you know, I, I normally, as I think I mentioned on one of the podcasts, I, when we're filming and we go in the post-production suite and we're putting on Atmos tracks and, uh, you know, kind of, um, and I'm able to turn down the birds or turn the birds up or the light. Oh, yeah, of course. And I, keep, and I keep looking for the switch to think, my God, I'm going to turn these birds down. They're a bit too, <laughs> a bit too loud. But, you know, we're talking about the natural world and, and then. Well, exactly. Yeah. Looking out, I'm just looking at the most beautiful lorikeet, all these colors and I'm wondering. It's like a painting. You think, my goodness, how beautiful is that little bird? And, and uh, absolutely gorgeous. It's a green, and oranges, and amazingly amazing colours. That uh, oh, beautiful! I've actually got a few rainbow lorikeets outside my window at the moment as well. My office looks onto a, a bunch of trees, and usually it's me with the birds in the background. So they're being a bit quieter today. Yeah, well, um, we, but we they're beautiful, aren't they? They're absolutely beautiful. We had to put back one of our things with you because you had a cat or have a cat still is a cat okay it went to the vet yes yeah it, it, he is okay his name's Benny um so he is a, a rescue so I just adopted him just over a month ago now and he actually arrived with some digestive issues bless him so I've been working with the vet to try and improve those and it's been a slow and steady process so and it's been going up and down but he seems pretty good at the moment he seems pretty pretty happy Oh, that's lovely. That's so yeah. are you a cat person or more or a dog person or do you like cats? Uh, I'm just an animal person, Ray. I love, I, I'm all about equal opportunities for the animals. Oh, it's just with my personal lifestyle, a cat made more sense. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, but I mean, eventually when I've got, you know, some more land um for you know a dog to be able to run around in yeah. um I'd, I'd love to do you know adopt a dog as well and probably eventually have some kind of zoo at my house because i just love animals but yeah nice. one, one step at a time yeah that's another dimension as well the animal world and you yeah. know i think that it's uh, again all my family we're all animal lovers and and um and through you know my wife and i through our charity we support a lot of uh, you know the zoo we used to uh, sponsor the kind of red pandas and all kinds of different uh, things yeah beautiful reading programs and, ex and it's uh, yeah that, that uh, it's like swimming with the dolphins you know I mean if I miss having a dog by my side or you know you need that really again you know, that's another yeah. uh, for that they and they call it again it's very very interesting where I mean, um, what do they call it? It's like comfort, some in America particularly where you're allowed your... your therapy, your, therapy animals, yeah. Therapy animals. I mean, some of them have like the most amazing, some of them have like peacocks and, and little horses and, and they can fly on airplanes and it's quite amazing that... Uh, but no, I, I can see that. Like, uh, and again, my mother, bless her. I mean, it's interesting, Laura, that... Um, and that's why I love Native American... Uh, 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 kind of uh, cultures or indigenous cultures because mm. my mother taught us to choose an animal and observe that animal and watch that animal and learn from that animal 
and 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 all of my family have done that. And uh, I mean, I can reveal that my animal is a gorilla, and yeah, I, can, I was just going to ask you actually, yeah, gorilla. And I often, I mean, it's interesting. All my life, I look at everybody and I think, oh, I wonder what kind of animal, what would be their spirit animal. Mm. But with that gorilla, and if if you you can, you know, you kind of. Um, you can go to them and learn a lot and observe them and become in tune with them. And it's, uh, yeah, so it's, uh, it, it, you know, I, I can well understand, you know, as you say, where you love animals and you need, you need Benny there and that will give you, I mean, it's just nice, isn't it, to have an animal in your life. And, yeah, absolutely. And how close and sadly, I mean, we, we had a couple of, uh, you'll remember Bob the dog, uh, yes. And Bob, who retired to my vineyard, and poor Bob, when he he died, I swore I'd never get another dog. It just hurt too much. And yeah. Uh, Bob was her best friend. He was a wonderful. He was that kind of, you know, he could calm me down, lower my blood pressure more than, uh, you know, kind of a glass of Pinot. Or, but I and now then I went out shopping with my son. Uh, my special needs son. Yeah, Cameron. No, uh, yeah, Cameron. Yeah, uh, and he wanted me to take him to the NSP, the, uh, the dog pound, just to. And I said, "There's no way in the world we're going to get any animals." And I thought he was after a little kitten, you know. And yeah. Uh, so we went there, and there was these two little dogs, and I thought, "Oh no!" And the man, and one of the dogs came up and started to lick his face, and and then the man was, and I was asking about the dogs, and. And I thought, oh, God. So I said, okay, we'll take that one. And he said, well, what about this one? It's his brother. And they, I thought, they, they look like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. And oh, she, twins. I yeah. No way they can be brothers, you know. But So I went out for a loaf of bread and came back with two dogs, you know. And, yes. uh, and, and my, my family loved it. And so, but sadly, the, uh, I mean, that was about 10 years ago. And sadly, one passed away just a couple of months ago and again it just it, you get so close but it's better to love as Shakespeare would say and lose than not to love at all absolutely <laughs> I couldn't agree more yeah but they they they're family that's family precisely and, yeah. and and we need that and and I I um I mean I'm sitting here today and I'm missing you know when we're in lockdown I I miss the animals you know I miss uh you know, I, I mean, I mean, the one thing I don't miss is I'm paranoid about snakes. How are you with snakes, Laura, and spiders? Uh, look, I'll be honest, I'm not very good with snakes and spiders. Spiders particularly, though, especially living in Australia, right? Eh? Like, <laughs> I mean, not only do they look terrifying, but they're genuinely terrifyingly deadly. Yeah. Um, but thankfully, I don't see a lot of um, snakes around yeah. where I live. Um, and the only spiders I've really seen are either just the really, really small kind of, you know, money spider type ones or the huntsmen yes. that look terrifying, but they're actually, um, they're actually not. They're one of the non-deadly, pretty chill ones. Yeah. I'm the same. I mean, you and me both. I mean, if there's a, I mean, if there's a, if there's a, a, a spider, I'm on the, I'm on the table, you know, like screaming. <laughs> yes. And I do know I'm the same. Oh, it's just horrendous, and uh, and again, that's very, very interesting. How you can, you know, how you're. I mean, the the fight or flight syndrome in health, the yeah. parasympathetic nervous system, eh, where it kicks in, and 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 imagination is the most amazing thing. So you think, how can this uh, spider, this tiny little thing, freak out somebody of our height? Or you know, you'd think it should be the other way around. I know, yeah, but it's uh, yeah, it's it's all amazing. Now, Laura, I'm I'm got some questions uh, if you don't mind from some oh, yeah, of, please. some of our fans and um and I'll just uh, yeah, we've got a lot of them from um, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and but a lot of emails. So um, this is a good, this one from Mark James. Good morning, Mark. Uh, May was such a beautiful underdog. She didn't get her man or woman she deserved. I relate to her always the outcast and had her own style. That's an interesting, uh, I mean, not so much a question, but um, yeah. So you, 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 your character, May, was very individual. and She was, yeah, fiercely and, independent. And, and very, yet 
and very very resilient, I have to say. And, uh, I agree, yeah. And, and but nice, vulnerable little uh, qualities, and which actually segues into an interesting one from Samuel Owisu. Good morning, Samuel. Are there any qualities or traits that may possess that you have also? I want to also add that I loved your portrayal of May. There was something about the fire in May that made viewers gravitate towards her. And that's that's true, actually, uh, Laura. You know, uh, the, 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 throughout the, uh, you know, um, your innate talents and abilities as an actress, and but your spirit, I think, uh, you know, May was a very interesting character. and so She Sam was, actually. She was quite complex, I yeah. think. Yeah. But yeah. yes, definitely very fiery. But I loved that vulnerability. Um, about her as well yeah so in terms of similarities I would say probably that resilience um, is a, um, a big piece that I resonate with um, for my own various you know um, life challenges that I've faced um, yeah I would say that kind of um, you know uh, just pulling your socks up a bit and you know not um ignoring what's going on obviously like definitely learning a lot through life with what um life presents to you and its challenges but also having that inner strength to um move through it yeah no that's good uh, that's a good that's a good summation of it uh, laura i agree with you i mean now i've got one from alicia perez good morning alicia uh, if you could have played any other character besides me who would it be and why Mm. Yeah, I always said that I would have loved to have played Ruby, actually, because the the sass, the sassiness of Ruby, the saloon owner, played by Fleur, um, who's one of my closest friends, um, I just loved that character and the sassiness of her. And just the fact that, you know, she, she wouldn't take any um, crap from anyone. You know, she was a strong, independent woman, and I just I just loved that character, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting that, uh, and um, yeah, so Flora, is, it, that, is she in America? She's in she is, yeah, she lives in LA. Yeah, she's lived there for a, a number of years now. Mm -hmm. And did you spend much time there, Laura, in LA? or? Yeah, so I actually lived there for on and off for a couple of years uh, with Flora. Wow. Um, yeah, so it was probably um, like a year full time and the year before that I was still on the yachts, but I would probably spend half the month in LA and half the month on the yacht yeah. um, as I was kind of transitioning off. But, um, yeah, I absolutely love California. I think one of that California is one of my soul homes. Oh. Mm. And, Laura, were you, I mean, with the acting that, I mean, have you, have you retired? Would you ever come back to acting? Oh, look, I get asked this question a lot, and particularly when um, I moved back to New Zealand, I mean, it must have been after LA, which, so it must have been five or six years ago before I moved over here, and, you know, reconnecting with, you know, Antonia and Tori and lots of the old, you know, tribe and Atlantis High um, friends of mine, and a lot of them were saying, oh, you know, you should get back into it, and I kind of thought, oh, maybe I'll dip a toe in and started auditioning just for ads and stuff and it just didn't quite feel right again and then when I you know um, decided to go back to university and do this degree I was like no I don't know this is what I'm supposed to be doing so I mean I, d I would never rule anything out in life um, but I'm so passionate about what I'm doing now that I just don't know how I could do both However, like I said, I won't rule anything out. But what I do, what I have um, kind of, I guess, managed to utilize from my old life of acting into what I do now is uh, with presentations. Um, so I guess having that um, that comfort on a screen or a stage um, has allowed me to kind of have that comfort in presenting to others and, and delivering the good word, I guess you could say, of naturopathic medicine to, to others. No, that's interesting. And, and 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 Laura, did you originally what gravity? Did you have an interest in the arts as a child, as a little girl growing up? Yeah, I did. I always loved um, loved drama at school. I don't think I was ever. I didn't feel like I was particularly good at it. I definitely enjoyed it. 
Um, and, you know, would always do the school plays and all that kind of thing, take drama classes at school. Um, but in terms of professionally acting, I kind of fell into it, um, really, yeah. yeah so I... it wasn't something that I expected to do, um, but I certainly enjoyed it while I was doing it. Yeah, because, Laura, you came into my life on, um, we did a, a project called Choice, you'll remember. And were you at school? Yes. Were yeah, you... I was. Yeah, so probably, I mean, and for the listeners, and we'll, I mean, at some point, I'm very proud of it, actually. It was a very important uh, I mean, it was a, a thing aimed at young people to mm. wait, have a choice for, and that's all kinds of thing. I mean, with sexual awakenings, with, um, you know, safe sex and uh, with uh, suicide and all kinds of drinking, drugs, everything. And it was, a, it, was, it was a very important project that we did. And you- Yeah, and, really important. And you were terrific in it. And Danny James was in it. Yes, and, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and that's where you're, gifts and talents first came to my notice, Laura, and, and so you were still at school probably, you know, uh, and then, you know, where the tribe then came, and and did, did, you, did you do your schooling, Do were you in a tribe school or you didn't do the schooling then? When you so, the yeah, I was doing um, the schooling, I transferred onto correspondence school to finish my schooling while we were doing the tribe. Um, but, I mean, I was already, by the time I came onto the tribe, I was kind of at the, going into my final year of high school anyway. So, yeah, that was, that, it wasn't too much of an impact on my school life, to be honest. Um, but, yeah, it was, do, it was falling into doing that, um, that film, that short film choice with, with you, with Cloud9. Um, and then from there, you invited me to audition for the tribe. And the only reason why um, I auditioned for Choice in the first place was um, a very, very close friend of mine, Nick Spilacy, um, you'd cast him in one of the other roles, the um, boy who was um, battling with depression and, you know, had the suicide storyline. Yeah. Um, and so he um, suggested that I go and audition. Uh, and And so I did. And... Ended up getting cast, and then yeah, from there being invited to audition for the tribe, uh -huh. um, which I think I had ori originally auditioned for another character. What's the name? Danny. Was that it? That's right. Yeah. Danny. It seems that you were going to be Danny. And, yeah. And but we saw I or I saw in you some other other elements that uh, I mean, had I known about the, I would have. You could have been an interesting Thai you know, that uh, would be. <laughs> yes. You know, uh, isn't that interesting that uh, so Laura I've just got some other ones bear with me here yeah. from yeah, yeah. Emil, Emil Martin good morning Emil uh, May was seen as someone who always looked after herself in times of stress mm -hmm. such as when she joined the chosen do you think you would have done the same in that situation thought you were great in both the tribe and Atlantis High also which outfits of May's was your favorite did you have a favorite outfit of May's Laura uh -huh. Well, first of all, thank you uh, for the compliments. Um, yeah, so to be honest, my favourite costume of May's was probably the very first one. Um, so it was the just because it was it was pretty badass. And I know that um, Nikki, who was the um, costume designer um, back then on the tribe, her kind of vision for May's costume was Xena esque. Um, which, you know, I was obviously pretty happy with. So there was the um, kind of brown tan um, leather top and kind of three-quarter pant type things and these awesome hand-painted boots and leather jacket, and I just thought it was pretty cool. Um, so that was probably my favourite costume. What was the other half of the question, sorry? The other one was about um, uh, the, the, in Atlantis High, that um, because uh, again, for I mean, it's interesting with Atlantis High, Laura, that where the tribe is this cult show, Atlantis High is a cult within a cult, you know. It's, <laughs> yes, it was, I loved shooting that show so it, much, by the way. It was, it was just so out there, and it's suddenly getting an audience, and and people are just fanatical about it and just loving it and really yeah and it's um oh, it was ahead of its time it was just weird wasn't it i mean it's like <laughs> it was so weird which is what i loved the most about it i knew it's terrific in it playing jet marigold and Thank and, and you, yeah. so, so i mean did you find that difficult 
uh, Laura, to, to do that transition? Or did you, I mean, Jet Marigold, the character was just so crazy, eh? Did you just, did you, did you had a lot of fun with it and enjoyed it? I had so much fun with that character. I mean, she, there were a lot of similarities between um, her and May, I think, in that kind of sassiness. Um, but just her her quirkiness, um, I just absolutely loved. Yeah. yeah. So just to be who she was. I mean, that was an interesting, she was very opinionated and all the conspiracy theories. And I know. She'd be doing really well in 2020, actually, in <laughs> Jet Marigold, with all the conspiracy theories no, floating no. about. Yeah. Um, but no, she was very unapologetic about who she was. She was very much this is who I am and, you know, either like it or lump it, which I actually really respect. Yes. You know, I think that's a really admirable quality. Yeah, I've been developing a, um, a in my writing, Laura, a, a story which thematically is about trying to be who you are, you know? And, um, yes. and because if you live your life trying to be what others expect you to be, you'll never be free. And, and it's interesting where you're, must uh, and 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 in mental health, I think so many people. I mean, you know, it's teenagers will go through peer pressure and try, uh, or or with parents saying that you should go and get a career or do this or do that. Yeah. And you end up being not you be what you perceive others to be, even what you love. You know, you try and be what your love wants you to be, where fundamentally you can never be happy eh, unless you're happy within. Um, exactly yeah I was gonna say as well and even just I know you spoke about in um, teenagers with peer pressure I think even as adults people of all ages especially with social media and things like that you know social media kind of and just media in general trying to tell us who sh who we should be and what we should buy and what we should look like and all that kind of thing yes. it's really hard you know uh, so very, very very hard and 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 again we've and in fact, some of the other podcasts we've talked about technology, we, we observed it in the tribe and mm, yeah. technos and paradise and that. But it is, it's very instant now in uh, communication where it's, uh, and, and, and you can then perceive on Facebook that maybe, or Twitter, or whatever it is, whatever form. I mean, I'm, I'm a bit of a dinosaur, but I do sense that some... Um, you know, people would think, hold on, I'm not having as good as life as somebody on Facebook. What's wrong with me? Why are they so happy? And I'm yeah. not. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Where people more often than not just um, present their, their the best version of their lives to to everyone on social media, right? You, what you're not seeing are the times when people are really down or having a bad day or received some news or had a you know, um, something happened to a loved one or, you know, all that kind of thing. It's, we don't see that as much. It's like we're all trying to say, hey, look at me. My life is great. But we're not seeing what's actually going on underneath that. And it's a very, it's a paradox, really, because the news is all bad news. You're very, very oh, good yes. news. And yet social media is all good news. It's very rarely bad news. And yet good news, it's almost sanitized and it tends to be, as you say, it seems to be perfect, where, you know, I think the only result of that is uh, as pleased as people would be to see people happy, but they're, yeah. they're so happy, they got everything, what's wrong with me, you know? And I think that's dangerous, I really do. Yeah, I agree, I agree. So I think that's a really important message of your writing, Ray, is to to encourage people just to... I mean, truly find who they are and really fall in love with that person and support that person and express that person authentically to the world. No, I, I think that's right. And it's, um, it's an interesting thing, really, because, you know, I think anxiety is such a dangerous... Mm, it's so it's, prevalent, yeah. too. And it's a, it's a good thing. I mean, it started as a good thing for the fight or flight. To, it keeps us safe. Mm. Imagination feeding that anxiety, um, you know, can bring a lot of stress and heartache. And uh, Are you an anxious yeah. person, Laura? Uh, I definitely um, have my own relationship with anxiety for sure. And if I'm not looking after myself, that plays out as anxiety. 
um, and low mood and, you know, all of that kind of thing as well. Um, but I've definitely learned a, lo a bunch of tools over the years to help manage my um, anxiety and any feelings of anxiousness that come up. So, yeah, it's definitely, um, you know, meditation, mindfulness practice, even just deep breaths as well. If I'm out and about and I start to, you know, feel a little bit overwhelmed by what's going on, just really big, deep, slow breaths. Yeah. Connecting with nature is such a big one um, for me personally. Um, yeah, just and to you, ground my energy. And do, do you walk? Do you like to get out and go for walks and this kind of thing? And Oh, I do. When I have time, when I'm able to, I'm out going for a walk outside every day. Um, which has been one of the great things about what's been going on at the moment is that I have had more time um, to do that. And, you know, obviously still observing the social distancing and so on that, you know, we're all kind of um, need needing to be aware of at the moment. But I'm really fortunate. I live um, uh, on a beach in Sydney, on Bondi Beach. And um, there's a really beautiful coastal walk that goes from um, Bondi, well, all over the eastern coast um, of Sydney here, um, through the eastern suburbs. But that way I'm able to go out for a walk, um, you know, in the fresh air, nature gets some sunshine, um, but also be able to look at the ocean as well. Um, so I'm very, very lucky, very blessed to be able to do that. It's interesting with the, um, you know, we were speaking earlier that with children or babies that, um, you know, I subscribe that, you know, when my kids were young and they didn't, when they were crying, I'd put them near like a dish, uh, like a uh, washing machine and they seemed to calm them down. Yeah. I, I thought I was mad, you know, and I said, I said, because they can hear similar things to when they were, when the mother was carrying them, you know. And, yeah, and I, that white noise, yeah. And that noise on the beach is very similar, you know, it's very rhythmic and very, very slow. And, and who was, I, was, I actually, I was speaking with Matt Robinson the other day. Ah, oh, yes. And, um, and, and uh, Matt, uh, you know, saying that I used to watch his rhythms, how he walked. He walked uh, uh, like in 4 4 time, you know, everything is a rhythm and, and the trees and, and the wind and everything is rhythmic and mm. and and, uh, and and you know uh, like cars and driving at you know eighty miles an hour, walking fast around the town and late for an appointment. It all everything gets out of sync, doesn't it? Really, and and that yeah. I think it's good for you and good for all of us if we can take that time and and um, yeah. So 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 Laura, with, with this. This this COVID nineteen, mm. you know, we we've uh, we have a lot of uh, a lot of letters from people that, that uh, uh, were reassured by the tribe watching it as a series, and all the yeah. storylines, and it kind of gave them reassurance or or some tips or they could relate or they they learned something from it. I mean, uh, is there anything that you could say to anybody that's maybe because a lot of people are a lot of people are anxious. Um, yeah. Any thoughts on that? How they could keep them calm? I mean, like just meditation, I guess, or not like any any. Do you live one day at a time, so to speak? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the biggest um, lessons that's being presented to most of us at the moment is just surrendering control. I mean, I think one thing that most of us have in common at the moment in these uncertain times is that we don't really have control over much at the moment, um, except for our own little kind of um, microcosm around ourselves, right? So I think that being able to take some time to just have acceptance over the fact that there are many things out of our control at the moment, which, you know, for me as a um, recovering control freak um, has certainly, you know, been a challenge at times. Um, but having that acceptance has really, really helped my mental health um, going through this process. And, yeah, everything that I spoke about before, so making some time to 
connect with yourself, whether that's through meditation, a guided meditation. You know, there are so many um, free meditation apps that you can get now, like um, Mind Space and, you know, things like that. Um, or just get a free one off YouTube. You can, um, you know, search a certain theme that you would prefer. I mean, there's so many free resources that you can get, even just connecting with your breath. So really um, long, deep breaths in and out is a really good way to, um, you know, kind of calm your nervous system as well. It's actually one of the f fastest ways to engage your parasympathetic nervous system, which is your rest and digest arm of your nervous system, um, which is the opposite of the sympathetic nervous system, which is what you keep referring to, Ray, as that fight or flight which is when our heart rate gets going and we start to experience anxiety and our blood's rushing around and we don't feel quite right, which, as you said, in an emergency is very important. But, you know, um, a lot of the time we're triggering that response unnecessarily um, because our brain doesn't know the difference between what's real and what isn't. So if we're thinking about something that is um, making us feel stressed and anxious, you know, like thinking about things that could happen yeah. and triggering that response. Our brain doesn't know that it's not actually happening, yeah, which right. is why having, you know, mindfulness and awareness around the thoughts that we're having and just reining them in a little bit, you know. Um, it's really easy to catastrophize our thoughts, particularly at the moment. And meditation is a really good tool to to bring it back down to um, to base camp I guess within ourselves and go no okay deep breaths I am safe you know um that kind of thing so and just in connecting with nature right. I think is a really important one as well that's great advice and I I totally agree with it and again I'm, I'm fascinated with everything you in fact I, th I sometimes I think oh my god I'm gonna quit I'm gonna study what Laura's studying ah you should it's I never love too it. late. It's yeah. never too, I love it I really do and and it's um and no, I'm fascinated with the uh, you know, I I, I um you know, often say, Laura, you know, if I knew I would live this long, I would have taken better care of myself, which is very interesting because, you know, I've uh, done everything that I shouldn't do, you know, but um, you know, my imagination is uh, you know, like today I think I think I've got COVID nineteen. It's the man flu, it's awful, you know, and I, I don't, you know, but you know, when I fly I I hate flying, you know, but I have to fly. I do. I live my life on an airplane. But in in the early days, and the stewardess would come up and say, "Are you okay?" Because they, when I first started to fly, they'd say, Are "You frightened of flying?" And I said, no, "I'm frightened of crashing," you know. And uh, yes, <laughs> I, don't like I used to have crippling fear of that when flying in my early twenties. That was, and I travelled a lot as well. But I eventually, yeah, managed to work my way through that one. But it's it's that same thing, isn't it? Where you know you'd sit there, as you say the the blood pressure goes up, the pulse rate, you start sweating, you get frightened. Yes, it's the imagination and uh, and um, yeah, and then be being on the sea. If you're in a a storm, you you start you know, <laughs> thinking that we're going to capsize or be on the Titanic or exactly the uh, parasympathetic nervous system. That's uh, very very interesting. And as Laura rightly said it's probably good not to feed the imagination by mm. and to just accept as you i think your word acceptance is just accept what is and what's in your control you can't change what isn't in your control do you subscribe to like some teas like green tea or uh i think that herbal teas are yeah are incredible and i think that all of us should should drink more i've actually got a green tea in my hand at the moment oh. you can drink too much green tea but that's that's another story so i try and limit it to just a couple of cups a day for green tea but there are so many beautiful um herbal teas out there especially Going back to what we were talking about with um, about anxiety, um, chamomile tea. So most people have probably heard of chamomile to help us get to sleep. Um, but even just if we're feeling like we're spiraling a little bit and starting to feel that anxiety creep up, chamomile is an amazing one for to nourish our nervous systems and, and help us feel calm. Well, it's like a sedative type effect, isn't it? Yeah, it's a mild sedative, yeah. 
That's great. That, 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 uh, and Laura, did, I mean, you don't, do you have clients now or, 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 or? Well, not right this minute under COVID restrictions. Unfortunately, our, um, our student uh, clinic on campus has shut down. So it's been um, closed for just going on six weeks now. And we won't be reopening again until um, the beginning of July. Um, where hopefully, um, you know, our community will be in a stronger position um, with COVID, which I think we will be. I mean, we're doing pretty well. So, um, but yeah, I have been seeing clients for the last year and um, have got a pretty strong client base um, at the moment, which is awesome. It's actually been a really hard thing for me. Again, one of those things that are completely out of my control that I've had to accept but the fact that I'm not able to support my clients through this time at the moment um, has certainly been challenging for me. I bet that it's uh, no. Well, when it's all, um, you know, uh, we, we'll at any given time. If you know, I think a lot of the tribal uh, fans out there would be fascinated to either I don't know if you do it online or whatever. I mean, I mean, I certainly would like some some tips on what to eat or not. So. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'll I'll let you know once yeah. once I've qualified and can start doing online uh, consultations. But in the meantime, though, Ray, I do. Um, I've got a, an Instagram page that I use to share, and I'm not trying to no, no. you know um, so shamelessly the, plug myself here. No, right, um, but for anyone you know, for yourself or anyone else out there who would like um, to learn a little bit more about this stuff and get some naturopathic tips on how they can support their health and well-being. Um, I do have an Instagram page that people can follow. And, and how would they find it's, it's a, Again, I'm not familiar with that. What would be the, the call sign for that? It's Laura? So, yeah, so my handle for Instagram is Laura Wilson underscore naturopath. Fantastic. Well, you should... Check it out, Tribal Brothers and Sisters. If you want to know more, check out Laura's Instagram page. And Yeah, please connect. <laughs> so for any any of you out there in Tribal World, do check out Laura's Instagram page. And I, I know you'll find it as fascinating as I have. And, and to find out more of uh, this amazing uh, alternative medicine, which is uh, really quite quite fascinating. And, and do you know, Laura, our hours pass so fast and Hasn't course, it? I know. I feel like I could speak with you all afternoon. Well, likewise, actually, it's it's absolutely fascinating. And so another time, but at some point, if we do do any more tribe, even if I could steal you for six weeks or eight weeks, or I'm sure I could convince you to come out of retirement, even if you went back to your uh, your your naturopathy, because you're too talented to, to <laughs> you know, do your acting. And who knows? You know, just. Uh, you just never know what will evolve, but it's all always... Yeah, well, like I said, I would never rule anything out. So well, you can't never leave, sure. that's for sure. And uh, and I think it's tremendous for you to have this in your life, and you're clearly passionate about it, and that's lovely. That gives a sense of purpose, and, yeah. and, 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 and that's the nicest thing. You can help a lot of people that really do need uh, need help, and so well done to you. I think that's terrific, and... Thank you. Yeah, I am very, very passionate about helping others. I really, truly feel like it's my calling. So, yeah, I'm very happy. The world needs that, Laura. There's a lot of uh, a lot of people that struggle. Mental health is important. Physical health, spirit. so important. Yeah. And I think good, good on you. I think that's a a terrific, uh, terrific thing to to do. And Thank you. you continued good luck and and really on behalf of. Uh, all your tribal brothers and sisters around the world, I'd like to take the time to thank you for taking this time, Laura. And uh, thank you. And I'm sorry to all of you out in tribal if I didn't get uh, too much into your questions. But you know, Laura said that you've had a fascinating life, Laura. That's for sure. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I've got a few good stories up my sleeve. Oh, yeah. Well, look, I was saying to Caleb. Caleb also has a fascinating him up in. Uh, up in Churchill and living with the polar bears, it's... Hey, uh, Caleb has got a very interesting story, yeah. Very interesting. And so I was saying he should write, and you should you should write. And and it's nice to know that you are doing some writing with your... Uh, you know, so we might we might get together on some uh, 
a book about naturopathy or whatever it is, you know, that. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I'd love to. No, but, but, um, and then closing, is there anything uh, on our 20th anniversary you'd like to maybe say to the, to the fan base, Laura, because it's 20 years since all this. I know. I can't believe it's 20 years. Um, well, first of all, I'd just like to say thank you so much uh, for having me um, on your on your podcast to interview Ray. I really appreciate that. And thank you for everyone who took the time to send in questions. And, you know, sorry if we didn't get to all of them. Um, and also, you know, take the time to listen to this interview um but also just thank you so much for your ongoing support for the last 20 years the amount of messages i've received over the years that have been so incredibly touching um you know speaking of how our our show has you know touched the hearts of so many and really helped and supported a lot of people go through some tough times um i think that the show addressed a lot of really important storyline not just for issues that um you know many teens experience but also for us adults as well in this journey of life so yeah thank you i'm i feel so um blessed and honored to be part of such a special show and thank you so much for all of the support well, that's lovely laura thank you very much for that and yeah. and take good care of yourself and you too yeah thank you and my love to all the family no likewise and our love back to you laura and lots of love to you you take care and we'll catch up again soon yes and that'd be great yeah all the best and goodbye to everybody in tribe world you look after yourselves as well lots of love bye bye now take care. thanks bye Bye-bye now, Laura. Bye-bye.